So now let's look at this idea of uh, determinancy and stability in a compound truss. So remember we had explored this idea before in the context of rigid bodies and we had come up with uh, a table that allows us to relate you know when a structure is stable or unstable based on the relationship between the number of unknowns we have and the number of equilibrium equations. So if the number of unknowns was less than the number of equations we had an unstable system. Likewise, if the number of unknowns was equal to the number of equilibrium equations, we had a stable system in which we could determine all the unknown forces. So it's stable and determinate. On the other hand, if the number of unknowns was greater than the number of equations, then we could have a stable system, but it is indeterminate because we will not be able to calculate all the unknown forces. So with that, let's look at the example of the Fink truss. Uh, we know that it already satisfies m equals 2n minus 3 in spite of the fact that it is not a simple truss. Now if it is on a roller and a pin then it turns out that this is a statically determinate system uh, because we have uh, something that uh, continues to agree with this situation here that m equals 2n minus 3 and so that means the Fink truss is actually uh, uh, stable uh, and completely uh, constrained system that means it won't move. The reason for that uh, can be further understood by thinking about the fact that our rollers and the pin in this case the F and the A they add three unknowns. So if you have M members in this section we have M plus three unknown forces. Remember each member gives one uh, unknown force because of Newton's third law. right? So if we, if we know the force from one side, we know the force from the other side. So we have m plus 3 unknowns. However, we know that the Fink truss does satisfy m equals 2n minus 3. That means m plus 3 equals 2n. And so we have a situation here uh, for the case where we have a pin joint and a roller joint that this Fink truss is in equilibrium and is a stable structure. So now let's look at uh, the next example here uh, and ask the question what can we say about determinancy and stability in the compound truss shown here which differs from the Fink truss in that we have only one joint here called CE that combines the two trusses and they have a common point here B at which they were uh, which the two simple trusses were joined. Well let's look at the number of um, uh, let's look at the number of joints we have in this structure right. So let's begin by counting n. So what is n? So I'm going to mark it in blue here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And because of symmetry, I have 7 on this side. That's 14. And then I have 1, which is b. That's 15. Which tells me that my m, in order for stability, m needs to be 2n minus 3. So that is going to be 27. So now let's go ahead and see if we can calculate if there are 27 members here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I have 13 on this side, and obviously I'm going to have 13 on this side as well. And then I have one extra here, which is CE, so M equals 27, and so that makes sense. And you can also see that we have three unknowns here, so that is um, uh, basically our, um, our roller joint and our fixed joint so that means that m equals 2n minus 3 is a, is a stable structure and determinant right uh, okay so now let's look at this example here another compound truss but now we have one two and three and four four new members that um, are being used to join the two simple trusses a b c and d e f it turns out that uh, when you do the analysis, you will find that the number of members is actually more than the number of uh, than 2n minus 3. And that means uh, number of members is basically a number of unknowns. And this is the number of equilibrium equations. And so we see here that this is a case where we have statically indeterminate condition based on that uh, criteria we had in the previous table. Okay. Finally, let's end with this example here where we have two identical trusses and uh, remember and here these trusses are missing a joint here at uh, CE 
and the two difference uh, the two uh, uh, the way in which the two trusses differ is only in this joint here in the top we have a roller joint while at the bottom one we have a fixed joint uh, also note that joints a are the same for the, both cases if I do the analysis uh, starting out here, I find that m is less than 2n minus 3. Uh, and that means that I have a situation starting out that it looks to be an unstable case because I have less unknowns um, than, uh, than the number of equations, right? Um, uh, so let's, let's go ahead. Oh, by the way, just for a moment, let's go back and look at this table here. Uh, so if I have less unknowns uh, than the number of equations, then that tends to be an unstable situation. And that's what uh, we seem to be heading to um, out here. But let's, let's check case A. So case A, we know that we have um, three unknown forces from the joints. So F gives us one and A gives us two, right? And so that means if I have M members, I have M plus three unknown forces. But we know now that uh, based on this criteria here, that m plus 3 is actually less than 2n for this particular truss. And so this is an unstable truss and it will collapse under its own weight. Now, uh, before we analyze truss B, why don't you pause the video here and think about it and uh, noting that we have now two forces each out here. So what happens now is that uh, you have four unknowns from the reaction forces at A and F and so we have M plus 4 as our total number of unknowns and now the question is that if we actually go through this truss we'll find that M plus 4 is actually equal to 2N and so that means um, we have the total number of unknowns being equal to the number of equilibrium uh, equations and so our truss becomes stable and that is also uh, uh, due to the fact that if you compare the two, in this case, we have fixed joints. And so that's why it's, it's important to look through uh, to what type of reaction forces we have in the context of M and N to actually make an assessment of whether we have stability and determinancy. So to end, um, we have discussed two key aspects here. The first is the method of sections that allows us to analyze the force in a, any given member in a complex truss system in a very efficient manner by taking a slice and then uh, calculating uh, forces uh, using a free body diagram of the freed up section. And then we looked at a compound truss which was defined as uh, a truss that is built by connecting together simple trusses in many different ways and within these compound trusses, indeterminacy and instability depend on the values of M and 2N as well as the type of reaction joints. So with that, uh, we come to the end of this uh, lesson. Thank you.